difference between the phrases shall not be less than 125% and not less than 125% is subtle but important in the context of electrical codes. Firstly, consider the phrase shall not be less than 125%. This phrase signifies that a specific value must be at a minimum of 125%. In other words, the value has to be equal to or greater than 125% to meet the requirement. If a value is presented that is less than 125%, it does not fulfill the requirement. For example, let's say we are examining a certain electrical load, and the code dictates that the overcurrent protection must be shall not be less than 125% of the continuous load. If the continuous load is 20 amps, we would calculate 125% of 20 amps, which is 25 amps. Therefore, the overcurrent protection must be rated at least 25 amps or higher to comply with the code. Any overcurrent protection rated less than 25 amps would not meet this requirement. Secondly, the phrase not less than 125% conveys a similar meaning but might be interpreted slightly differently. This phrase means that the value should be equal to or greater than 125%. Essentially, it imposes a minimum threshold of 125%. If a value is lower than this threshold, it does not comply with the rule. For instance, if the code stipulates that the ampacity of a conductor should not be less than 125% of the continuous load, it signifies that the conductor's ampacity must be at least 125% of the continuous load. If the continuous load is 40 amps, we would calculate 125% of 40 amps, which equals 50 amps. Thus, the conductor's ampacity must be 50 amps or higher to satisfy the code requirement. Any conductor with an ampacity lower than 50 amps would not meet this condition. Now, let's address the mathematical operations. The code references, such as section 210.20 and 422.13 provide guidelines on how to apply these percentages in calculations. The choice between division and multiplication depends on what you are trying to determine. If you need to find the minimum required value, you typically multiply. If you need to check if a given value meets the minimum requirement, you might divide. Let's illustrate this with examples. Suppose you're sizing an overcurrent protective device for a continuous load. The code states that the overcurrent protection shall not be less than 125% of the continuous load. If the continuous load is 16 amps, you multiply 16 amps by 1.25 which is 125% expressed as a decimal to find the minimum required ampacity of the overcurrent device. 16 amps multiplied by 1.25 equals 20 amps. Therefore, you would need an overcurrent device rated at least 20 amps. If the standard sizes available are 15 amps, 20 amps, and 25 amps, you would select the 20 amp overcurrent device since it is the smallest standard size that meets the shall not be less than 125% requirement. In another scenario, imagine you are verifying whether an existing conductor is adequately sized for a specific load. The code mandates that the conductor ampacity not be less than 125% of the continuous load. Suppose the continuous load is 30 amps and the conductor has an ampacity of 40 amps. To verify compliance, you can divide the conductor ampacity by 1.25 and compare the result to the continuous load. 40 amps divided by 1.25 equals 32 amps. Since 32 amps is greater than the continuous load of 30 amps, the conductor meets the requirement. However, if the conductor ampacity was only 35 amps, dividing 35 amps by 1.25 gives you 28 amps. As 28 amps is less than the continuous load of 30 amps, the conductor would not meet the code requirement and would need to be upgraded to a larger size. Consider a scenario where you are sizing a branch circuit for a non-motor appliance with a continuous load. According to section 422.13, the branch circuit rating not less than 125% of the marked rating of the appliance. If the appliance is rated at 12 amps, you would multiply 12 amps by 1.25 to determine the minimum branch circuit ampacity. 
12 amps multiplied by 1.25 equals 15 amps. Therefore, you would need a branch circuit with a minimum opacity of 15 amps. This means you would typically use a 15 amp or 20 amp circuit breaker or fuse, depending on the specific requirements of the appliance and the standard sizes available. Another example involves calculating the feeder demand load for a group of electric ranges in a dwelling unit. The National Electrical Code provides tables such as Table 220.55 that allow you to apply demand factors to the total connected load of the ranges. However, in some cases, you might need to ensure that the feeder is sized adequately for the potential continuous load. If the nameplate rating of each range is 8 kW, and you have four ranges, the total connected load is 32 kilowatts. If the authority having jurisdiction requires you to apply the not less than 125% rule to the largest range, you would calculate 125% of 8 kilowatts, which is 10 kilowatts. You would then add this value to the demand load calculated from table 220.55 to determine the minimum required feeder capacity. In summary, the phrases shall not be less than 125% and not less than 125% both indicate a minimum threshold of 125%. The mathematical operation, whether multiplication or division, depends on the context and what you are trying to calculate. Multiplication is used to find the minimum required value, while division can be used to verify if an existing value meets the minimum requirement. Always refer to the specific wording and context of the code section to determine the correct approach. For instance, NEC section 210.20 addresses overcurrent protection for branch circuits and requires that the overcurrent device be rated not less than 125% of the continuous load, ensuring that the circuit is protected against overload. NEC section 422.13 pertains to the branch circuit requirements for appliances and mandates that the branch circuit be rated not less than 125% of the appliance's marked rating, guaranteeing sufficient capacity for the appliance's operation. Understanding these nuances and applying the appropriate mathematical operations are crucial for ensuring electrical safety and code compliance. Here are further examples to clarify the application of the 125% rule in different scenarios. Suppose you are calculating the opacity of a feeder supplying continuous and non-continuous loads. The continuous load is 80 amps, and the non-continuous load is 40 amps. According to the NEC, you must size the feeder to carry at least 125% of the continuous load plus the non-continuous load. To calculate the minimum required feeder opacity, you first multiply the continuous load by 1.2580 amps multiplied by 1.25 equals 100 amps. Then, you add the non-continuous load to this value 100 amps plus 40 amps equals 140 amps. Therefore, the minimum required feeder opacity is 140 amps. You would then select a conductor size from NEC table 310.15. B16 that has an opacity of at least 140 amps, considering any applicable correction factors for ambient temperature or the number of conductors in a raceway. Another example involves calculating the size of a transformer supplying a continuous load. The NEC requires that the transformer be sized to handle at least 125% of the continuous load. If the continuous load is 50 amps at 240 volts, you first calculate the kilovolt ampere, or kVar, of the load 50 amps multiplied by 240 volts equals 12,000 volt amps, or 12 kVA. Then, you multiply this value by 1.25 to account for the continuous load 12 kVA multiplied by 1.25 equals 15 kVA. Therefore, you would need a transformer rated at least 15 kVA. You would then select a standard transformer size that is equal to or greater than 15 kVA, such as a 15 kVA or 25 kVA transformer. In the context of motor circuits, the 125% rule is also applicable. For example, when sizing the conductors for a motor circuit, the NEC requires that the conductors have an opacity of at least 125% of the motor's full load current rating. If a motor has a full load current rating of 10 amps, 
you would multiply 10 amps by 1.25 to determine the minimum required conductor ambacity. 10 amps multiplied by 1.25 equals 12.5 amps. Therefore, you would need conductors with an ampacity of at least 12.5 amps. You would then select the appropriate conductor size from NEC Table 310.15. B. 16. Considering any applicable correction factors. In addition to conductors and overcurrent protection, the 125% rule can also apply to the sizing of equipment. For instance, when sizing a generator for a continuous load, the NEC requires that the generator be capable of supplying at least 125% of the continuous load. If the continuous load is 20 kW, you would multiply 20 kW by 1.25 to determine the minimum required generator capacity. 20 kW multiplied by 1.25 equals 25 kW. Therefore, you would need a generator with a capacity of at least 25 kW. Always consult the specific sections of the NEC and other applicable codes and standards to ensure that you are applying the 125% rule correctly in each situation. The proper application of this rule is critical for ensuring electrical safety and preventing overloads, overheating and potential fire hazards. Remember that electrical codes and standards are updated regularly so it is essential to stay informed about the latest requirements and best practices. Additionally, consider consulting with a qualified electrical engineer or licensed electrician if you have any questions or concerns about applying the 125% rule in a specific situation. They can provide expert guidance and ensure that your electrical installations comply with all applicable regulations. Here's a recap of the key points regarding the shall not be less than 125% and not less than 125% rules. Firstly, both phrases essentially mean the same thing. They both indicate that a valley must be at least 125% of a given valley. Secondly, the choice between multiplication and division depends on the specific application. Use multiplication when you need to find the minimum required valley. Use division when you need to verify if an existing value meets the minimum requirement. Thirdly, always refer to the specific wording and context of the relevant code section. The NEC and other electrical codes provide detailed guidance on how to apply the 125% rule in various situations. Fourthly, consider the type of load. The 125% rule is commonly applied to continuous loads which are loads that are expected to operate for three hours or more at a time. Fifthly, ensure you are using the correct values. Double check your calculations and verify that you are using the correct nameplate ratings, opacities, and other relevant values. Sixthly, account for any applicable correction factors. When sizing conductors, be sure to consider any correction factors for ambient temperature, the number of conductors in a raceway, or other conditions that may affect the conductor's opacity. Seventhly, select the appropriate overcurrent protection. Choose an overcurrent device, such as a circuit breaker or fuse, that is rated to protect the conductors and equipment in the circuit. Eighthly, consider the voltage drop. Ensure that the conductors are sized adequately to minimize voltage drop, which can affect the performance of equipment and appliances. Ninthly, document your calculations. Keep a record of your calculations and the assumptions you made. This will help you to justify your design decisions and demonstrate compliance with the applicable codes and standards. Tenthly, seek expert advice. If you are unsure about any aspect of the 125% rule or other electrical code requirements, consult with a qualified electrical engineer or licensed electrician. They can provide valuable guidance and ensure that your electrical installations are safe and compliant. By following these guidelines, you can ensure that you are applying the 125% rule correctly and effectively, promoting electrical safety and preventing potential hazards.